Greetings everyone, my name is Dr. Jason Freeman and I'd like to welcome y'all to my channel. In this video, I review the film Black Power, A British Story of Resistance, directed by George Amponsa and narrated by Daniel Kaluuya. I'm gonna tell you what I liked about the film, I'm gonna tell you what I didn't like about the film, then I'm gonna tell you why I think you should see the film or just skip it. Now at any point, feel free to click the notification bell or subscribe to my channel to get more content. So without further ado, let's begin. Power, A British Story of Resistance, chronicles the rise and fall of the Black Power movement in Great Britain. Now, in the film, we hear from various members of the Black Power movement in Great Britain, as well as from the police and other individuals who are kind of periphery to the situation, um, essentially describing what happened in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s as the Black Power movement kind of grew and flourished. Now, what did I like about the film? Well, first and foremost, I really love the storytelling within the film. Now, the film starts with the story of the Windrush generation. So this is a generation of Afro-Caribbean immigrants who came to Great Britain right after World War II to help rebuild the country. Now, in this section of the film, you hear from people who are part of the Windrush generation. You hear from people uh, who were the children of the Windrush generation. You also hear about the, the incidences, in particular the racist in incidents um, that happened during this time. There's also a section of the film on the Mangrove Nine. Now, anyone who's seen the Small Acts Anthology series will, kn series will know about this particular uh, situation. So you had a uh, French Critchlow who owned the Mangrove restaurant, an Afro-Caribbean uh, restaurant in London. Um, police were harassing him. Then there was a protest and nine individuals from that protest were arrested um, and, and harassed by the police. Now, there's a whole court case around this. I would definitely encourage y'all to watch the film Mangrove. Also, uh, please check out the uh, review that I did of the film, uh, which you can see a card for on the screen right now. There's a story of Michael X. Uh, now, this is a story I had no idea about before watching the film. Um, and so with this, it's this really fascinating story. Uh, about this British individual, um, Afro-Caribbean British individual, who um, you know was part of the Black Power movement, but had a really weird, interesting uh, trajectory in his life. Um, definitely, I'm not going to spoil anything here, but definitely check out the film um, to hear that story. And there's also this, again, really weird, interesting story of the Spaghetti House Siege. Again, I didn't know about this. Um, this is something I'm assuming is better known within Great Britain, uh, of course, people who lived through it would know about it. And so it's a situation where you have the Black Power movement, criminality, and this kind of weird hostage situation that kind of came together. Um, so there's actually a film about this as well um, from the director of uh, of the film Pressure, um, Ove. And so I would definitely, again, watch the documentary to hear about, uh, to, to, to kind of learn about the situation. I don't know about the film from Ove. Um, I didn't really like Pressure, so I don't know if... Um, I don't know if that film's any good, but I would definitely, again, check out the documentary for that story. And so another thing I loved about the film were the connections it made uh, between the different Black power, Black liberation movements around the world. And so in the film, we hear about African-Americans who went over to Great Britain who were part of the Black power movement in that country. We hear about Dr. King's visit to Great Britain. We hear about Malcolm X's visit there as well. Uh, one of the one of the um, people who are giving their testimony for the video um, talked about W. B. Du Bois, a famous African American sociologist, and his kind of in influence on the movement there. Uh, we also hear about James Baldwin, a, a famous African American writer. And so, one of the big things with this film is making the connections, uh, both with uh, African Americans and, and Black British, Afro Caribbean people, as well as the apartheid anti apartheid movement in South Africa. And so one of the things I really love about this film is that it's not just focused on Britain itself, but also looking at the larger African diaspora, which essentially um, has many parallels um, and connections between these different communities. Another thing I really liked about the film was that it 
connected the, the Black Power Movement of the 50s, 60s, and 70s in Great Britain with the current Black Lives Matter movement. Many of the same issues that the Black Power Movement was pushing against, uh, police brutality, um, unequal treatment and things like hiring and housing, all these different situations, uh, essentially, uh, we still see today in Great Britain as well as the United States. And so one of the things that this film really does is really connect and kind of give the bigger picture of the struggle of the African diaspora um, and some of the common things that are, are the consequence of colonialism uh, in America, in Britain, and around the world. A third thing I liked about the film is that it was not unwilling to critique the Black Power Movement itself. Now, one of my worries going into the film is that this would be pretty much a propaganda film. So essentially saying, this is what is great about the Black Power Movement, this is why it should be celebrated, and that's it. Um, there were critiques from people within the movement, from outside. Um, you have police um, being represented in the film, which I thought was really interesting. Um, so in the film, uh, Mangrove, as well as um, uh, film Red, White, and Blue um, from Small Axe, uh, the police in many ways are, are kind of largely demonized. And it's not that you know you shouldn't shouldn't critique and shouldn't be critical of racist policing and and when that does happen it should be dealt with um you know through through like you know prosecution things like that but one of my my, my big critiques of the small act series is that it shows uh police almost as kind of in, inhuman creatures and so you know we have people who make horrible decisions who, who essentially are kind of uh, in this situation where they don't really understand what's going on. People can change, uh, people can make mistakes. And so I think it's important if you want to have ultimate change in society is to understand the kind of human frailties and try to essentially not demonize people in a way, but try to find ways that we can bridge uh, the gap between people and fix the situation as a whole. And the last thing I really liked about the film was how well it was produced. Um, and so Steve McQueen is one of the producers of this film. You can kind of see that in the same way that Small Axe was, had a lot of money behind it and was really well produced, this is also well produced. The music is fire. I love the music in this film in the same way that I love the music in the Small Axe anthology series. Um, a lot of effort, a lot of time was put into this. And when you put the kind of time and effort that was put into this, it had a really, really good product. Now, what did I not like about the film? But to be honest, there wasn't very many things I didn't like about this film. This film was actually really, really good. Uh, one of the things I didn't like is I felt like it probably would have been better if it was an, uh, a limited series rather than a movie. So the movie's about an hour and a half of runtime, and it feels like it only really scratches the surface. Um, there's a lot more stuff that they could have put in this. Um, the movie would have been super long. And with that, if they had done it in chapters, kind of like the uh, small acts anthology series is in essentially chapters, I think it would have been just as good, if not better. Um, again, you have, they did the whole thing with the mangrove. That could have been an episode. The Enoch Powell situation, that could have been an episode. The Windrush generation, that could have been an episode. And even like the more modern Black Lives Matter parallels with um, the uh, with, with the Black Power Movement, that could have been episode two. So you can have several episodes of a, a limited series, and I think it would have been, again, probably even better. I guess one other critique, and it's not really something I didn't like per se, it was just something that I think could have been done better, is one of the the, the um, concepts that I'm going to talk about my Blacks in Great Britain class is the idea of political Blackness, which is something that we don't really see in the United States. And so in Great Britain, um, you have this idea that uh, Asian, uh, South Asians in particular, and African, uh, people of African descent are kind of in the same group. And it's almost considered, both considered black, um, but not black in like skin tone necessarily, but black in kind of politics wise. That you have these groups that are, are colonized, that are oppressed. And so because they're in a similar situation, they're both considered quote unquote black. So... So you see this documentary or just skip it. Now, for someone who was interested in black history uh, in general, for someone who wants to know more about black, uh, not, uh, more about British history in general, uh, for someone who, let's say an African-American who wants to know about, you know, the plight of black people in other parts of the world, this is a must-see film. Um, I learned stuff watching this film and I, I've studied this, I'm starting to study this area more and more, you know, with the class that I'm teaching. Uh, so I went into this with some knowledge, but even with that knowledge, there's still so much more that I learned from the film. And the other thing that's really good about the film is that you're hearing first person. So this isn't some 
and I'm, I'm an academic, is this is some academic talking about the situation. You have people who are part of the Black Power movement talking about their own experiences. You have police officers who were police at the time with the bricks and riots happened, um, with the spaghetti house siege happened, talking about what they experienced. And so I, I you know, even people who are who maybe are academics studying this thing probably would learn stuff hearing from these people um, that they wouldn't learn just from books. Now, this film is a great companion piece to the Small Acts Anthology series. And again, as I mentioned, Steve McQueen is one of the producers. So if you've seen that series, uh, definitely check out this film. If you haven't seen that series, I would say watch the series first um, and then check out this film. Because what's going to happen is you'll see the parallels. Now, I would say that um, the Small Acts Anthology series, because it's broken up into these different little chapters, it'll give you, in some ways, more information broadly about these things so you can cover more stuff but because it's a documentary it's going to explain things a little bit more in more detail so again while you're you're getting more story with the small acts anthology series um you're getting more details um and also again the, the hear about the real people and for example um there there are uh, there's one character in the small acts anthology series that they go into detail about his background that you don't get from that series in the documentary and so you get a lot more details and again it's, 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 it's a documentary so there's there's certain things that are going to they're going to be able to communicate better than just a narrative film now if you found this review helpful please like this video and subscribe to my channel also please share this video also leave a comment below and tell me any uh, film about the african diaspora or about black british culture in general um, that you would like me to review and talk about thank you all and have a wonderful rest of your day